What's up Raider Nation? Today we're talking about the parking situation. As just announced at the Allegiant Stadium, the Raiders Stadium, they just put out all the parking information for both the games as well as any events that are going to be held at the stadium. All right, this is going to be a two-part video. The first part is going to be about all the information they put out. I've broken it down. I got it listed out and I'm going to read it off to you, let you know exactly what was put out. The second part of the video is going to be me going out to the sites that I talk about and I'm going to show you exactly where they're at and what they look like so you can get an understanding of where they are in the world and where they are compared to the stadium. All right, let's dive right into this. There's a lot of information that's put out, so I'm just going to get right into it. All right, first thing, number of spots. They've announced there's going to be 35,000 parking spots available within one mile of the stadium itself. Additionally, there's going to be a limited number of spots at the stadium. On site at the stadium will be a limited number of spots available for full season pass holders. Additionally, there'll be parking garages available at the Luxor, the Excalibur, as well as the Mandalay Bay, and they'll have their own prices for that. Now, pricing they said is going to be between $40 and $100 for a normal sized vehicle. So I assume that's just pickup trucks and down. They didn't really specify. There is going to be an oversized vehicle lot available, but it's $250. Yeah. They're saying the average for the cost of parking will be $75, which is the same as other stadiums throughout the country. So I guess it is rounding that off. <clears throat> the MGM properties, which is the Luxor, Excalibur, uh, Mandalay Bay, they said they're going to announce their prices as of June 14th. So I'll do a little edit to this video at that time and update you with the prices. Now as far as tailgating goes, they said there's going to be up to 6,000 tailgating spots at $40 a pop available off-site and 100 tailgating spots available on-site. On-site again being at the stadium itself. Now in order to get a spot, you have to buy it through an app called Spot Hero, S-P-O-T-H-E-R-O -E app. And that's the way you're going to get it. And it has to be a bot ahead of time they said <clears throat> they said the uh, lots will be open four hours ahead of time for games and three hours ahead of time for events that are not games they'll also close one hour after events or games now they said that the largest area for parking their off-site parking is going to be at a detention basin called the tropicana detention basin now this is off of win and Aquando road again stay tuned here coming up and we're going to go take a look at that according to them there should be 2700 spots available within this parking area and additionally they're going to have their employee parking at the retention basin now their plan is or what they're expecting is for 20,000 people to be walking from the strip to the stadium using the hacienda avenue bridge they're going to close that down for vehicle traffic and just have people walking and again we're going to go out there and check that out here in just a minute now in the south east corner of the Luxor parking lot is going to be up to 130,000 square feet of tailgating space. They didn't say if it was spots or how it was allocated, just that that is there. Now, if you're walking over the bridge, the bridge from the bridge start to uh, the stadium, you're looking at about 10 to 15 minute walk. Uh, that doesn't count where you're coming from within the strip. They said obviously there's going to be the buses that will be running. The RTC has uh, double decker buses. Those will be running up and down the strip as well as the monorail, but that's um, actually on the other side of the strip. So you're going to have to plan out your trip. Now, talking about that, there is going to be Uber, Lyft, and Taxi drop off areas. However, they won't be right at the stadium itself. They're going to be just off. Now, if you look at this map, right here you can see these are the areas for the uber lift drop off i'm going to go out there and i'm going to show you what those look like in person kind of what uh you're looking at for a walk time and then they did say for the uh, actual uh, parking lot areas that are specified for the stadium there will be shuttles that'll go back and forth and then there will be shuttles that are going to go back and forth from there. All right, so that is the basic information of what we know right now, what we've been put out. Um, I'll put a video link up above of when we went to the stadium a couple months ago, right before it was officially open, and you can see there's not a lot of stadium parking. So we knew this was going to happen, so it looks like their plan is going to be busing, walking, and people having to figure out their own way to get there. So it's going to be pricey. All right, now that you've stuck with me through all that, I appreciate it. What we're going to do now, I'm going to take you out to the field, and let's start by figuring out where these taxi stands will be. All right, we're going to start with the north rideshare lot. This will be the Uber Lyft drop-off. We're going to move to the south rideshare lot, 
this is right by, by all the hotels in that area. All right, now we're going to start with the E parking lot. That's just to the north. And now we're going to move along the east side of the stadium. You can kind of see the different parking lots as well as the different entrances along the east side. And this is moving down Dean Martin Road. And then we're going to move over to the area where the retention basin is. This is where the, all the parking is supposed to be, but there's nothing done yet. So hopefully they're uh, planning on building this sometime soon because going by there, there's literally nothing except construction stuff. So we'll see what comes there. All right, now we're going to move over to some of the off-site parking. This is over to the uh, west um, of the stadium. You can see not a lot being built yet. Um, this whole area, there's some areas that are paved, but there's still some areas that need to be worked on. Uh, we're moving now over by Tropicana. This is where the uh, parking garage will be. You can see it's being completed, not done yet. This is the only actual parking garage um, we saw anywhere on the area. And then it moves into a couple of lots right in that area, still being finished up. Now we're coming up on the uh, Polaris Avenue side. This will be to the west of the stadium. Uh, this is the practice facility down there. It's real hard to see down there, but that's their practice field. Moving past some of the uh, gates as well as the other parking areas. Um, there's lots of parking for handicap right up front. I don't know if you have to pay for that. Uh, we're moving now towards Hacienda Road and this will be the overpass here where they're going to close it down uh, to everything but foot traffic. So you can see when I said the 10 to 15 minute walk it doesn't seem like it driving but I got that fast forward and alright so we get across and here it is from underneath looking back towards the stadium. Alright, so that's everything is the best that I can tell right now. I've dissected all the information that's been put out. I'll definitely update anything that changes. Uh, do me a favor though, leave a comment if you're curious about anything. I'll definitely try and get those questions answered. And as always, make sure you like, subscribe, and follow. And we'll see you soon.